Choudhury to speak on the Hofas. Yeah, can we start? So my brief is to talk about the Hoffa's fracture. How does this go? There are certain cunning fractures. We tend to miss them. And Hoffa is one of the me-toos. Uh, there are several partial, uh, this is a severe partial coronal fracture of the posterior condyle. And if it is very low only, there is a capsular attachment to it. The lateral side hofa is more common than the medial side. And they are usually unilateral. The AO classification says it is 33.2B3, but it doesn't help in any prognostic status. The popular um, classification is one that of Littner. Uh, it is uh, type 1 if it is going parallel to the posterior cortex. A type 2 divided into ABC if it is posterior to the posterior cortex of the femur. And if it goes, if it is oblique fracture of the uh, femoral condyle, it is a type 3. But again, it is the type 2 that lacks the soft tissue and has uh, and is more prone to osteonecrosis and non-union. Um, Bagaria and he was in Nagpur when he described his classification as grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4. It is a CT guided basis uh, um, uh, classification and this classification depends on the size of the fragment from the medial epicondylar axis on the axial CT cut. So if there is combination, it is a type 3 or a grade 3. And if there is a presence of uh, 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 sagittal fracture as well, in addition to the coronal fracture, it is a grade 4 fracture. This classification is not popular still. Uh, not much work has been done. But it is helpful to uh, give us the right approach and whether we will need a plate in addition to screws that we use. Now this is a 52 year old male, vehicular accident, pain in the right knee, some achymosis, some laxity, some swelling and no fracture seen. But a CT scan is mandatory whenever you have any suspicion or even if you have the slightest doubt, you should get a CT scan to rule out a uh, uh, Hoffa's fracture. Let's look at this x-ray. Looks fairly all right to the unexperienced, but there is some flattening of the condyle and you can see double articular lines on the, of the distal femur. So if on a true lateral view, the femoral condyles are not superimposed, be wary to misinterpret these x-rays and never say this is a poor quality x-ray. If in doubt, a CT scan is mandatory. So this is the CT scan of this patient which very clearly shows a very common, a fairly comminuted fracture which would fall in the Bagaria 3. Finally, if we want to find out about the soft tissue injuries, especially the MCL, the medial collateral ligament or the lateral collateral ligament injuries, then an MRI scan is uh, helpful. Conservative treatment has no role because this is a shear fracture and treat it conservatively, this is certainly bound to go for a non-union. And this should be, like all other fractures, anatomically reduced, rigidly fixed, and mobilized early. For planning, the most controversial part of a Hoffa fracture is its approach. This should involve, the decision making should involve the condyle, in, in the condyle involved, the location, the orientation and the amount of combination. So if it, there is a lateral Hoffa, a lateral or a anterolateral approach or a swashbuckler approach is good. Now if there is a medial Hoffa, you could do a medial parapatellar approach to it or a subvastus approach 
if need be. For a type 2, that is one of the more posterior ones, either a posterior approach, but if there is a very complicated situation like a non-union or a malunion which you need to correct, a tibial tuberosity or striatomy uh, gives you good exposure. Everyone knows a lateral parapatellar approach for the lateral hofa, a medial parapatellar approach for the medial hofa, a subvastus again for the medial hofa, tibial tuberosity approach for the complicated or the bicondylar hofas, and occasionally you use a posterior approach for the smaller when you want to put your screws from posterior to anterior in such situation. Remember, hofa is best reduced in flexion because the forces on the capsule, the gastrocnemius and everything, they relax. When you are reducing it, you visualize the fracture site from where, whichever approach you are taking. You may use a joystick and it is better to keep the, the knee in deep flexion so you get your reduction easily. You insert your guide wires, you hold the fracture with the clamp, insert, hold it temporarily and then you fix in your screws. The screws should go proximal to the patellofemoral joint if possible. They should be as lateral or as medial as possible and the, they should be perpendicular to the fracture side. Remember that these screws would not go vertical, they would go parallel to the lateral surface. So these are anterior to posterior, but if the fragment is small, posterior to anterior screws should be used. Hoffa screws can be, sorry, the Herbert or the headless screws can be used and you get long ones as well and you could use a plate as a washer in osteoporotic fractures. Anti-glide plates may be used in case of shear fractures. To summarize, this is an unusual injury, a high velocity injury can be missed and so a CT scan is mandatory. Visualize and open reduction is the choice. The aim as for, as for any other and, um, joint involving fracture, buttress the plate if need be, Early mobilization is mandatory and knowledge of the anatomy and the rate of miss, etc. is important. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajur.